Make sure we continue to continue the session. And it's a great pleasure to introduce Asaf and Zikri, who will speak on Hutch theory of brilliant covers about Ray Pride. Uh, thank you for the introduction and to the organizers for inviting me here. Um, so I'm going to talk about work in progress with my co-author, Ms. Sara Lanquento. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, uh, this is the outline of the talk. So first I'll introduce what Alexander modules are. So these are abelian covers of algebraic varieties and we'll see in which setting. So these are the objects that I wanna do hard series to. Then I'll, I'll state the goal. So what I wanna do to them. Um, and then part three, I'll have to start by reviewing previous work uh, together with Christian Gesky, Mrs. Avalanquito, Laura Kirnas, and Botan Juan um, on a mixed hot structure we put in the one variable Alexander module. So they're gonna be a, a, a particular kind of these civilian covers that I'm gonna be considering. And then we'll move on to the main results of the generalization that's currently work in progress. So, please. Alexander Modules. Oh, uh, if at any point there are questions, stop me. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> so for me, this is going to be a complex semi-abelian variety. Uh, these have already appeared in this conference, but it's a complex algebraic um, abelian group, which lies in a short exact sequence between a torus and an abelian variety. So it can be either of these or something in the middle. Um, and I'm gonna let, okay, M be the dimension of the torus, A the dimension of the abelian variety. And U is gonna be a smooth connected complex algebraic variety with an algebraic map to, to D, to the group. And so here's the setup. I'm gonna use the pointer here, so hopefully you see. I have my semi-abelian variety. I have my exponential map, which is the universal cover, the exponential map from Lie groups. Um, but it is a covering space in this case, so I can just pull it back through F and I'll get a covering space over here with the same deck group as this, covering space, which since it's the universal cover, it'll be the fundamental group of G. And since G lies in between these two, it'll be the direct sum of the fundamental group of this and this. It's it's the free abelian group of rank M uh, plus two L, where L is the dimension of the abelian variety. And this is gonna be the main object of study. This uh, cover that has infinite uh, sheets. Uh, so that's a good question. If F is surjective at the level of fundamental groups, then that will be equivalent to this cover being connected. So yes, but it doesn't matter if it's not. I'll just have something that is not connected and there will be a mixed hot structure on each of the Oh, spoiler, um, eventually <laughs> there will be a mixed hot structure on, on each of the pieces. Um, but I guess the, the first thing to notice here is that we have left the comfort of algebraic geometry over here because the, the exponential map is not an algebraic map. So whatever I get, I get over here is a complex analytic manifold, but it's not an algebraic variety in general. And because of that, so one thing that can immediately go wrong is that algebraic varieties um, have the homotopy type of a finite CW complex, but these things don't in general. So if, if I want to deal with homology or cohomology, it's, it's, it's going to be more complicated. So let's, um, let me define Alexander module. So I'm going to fix the field. I like those three. Um, but um, it's mostly going to be the rationals or the reals. Uh, the The strongest statements will be over the rationals. And R is going to denote the the group ring over the fundamental group of the semi-abelian variety. 
um, which since the fundamental group of the semi-abelian variety is free abelian um, of rank m plus 2l, then it's it's isomorphic to a Laurent polynomial ring on, on that many variables. Uh, but this isomorphism is not canonical. So well, just if you want to picture what's going on. Okay, um, now I have here a local system, which again, I'm, I'm not gonna use it in this talk, but it is how we do proofs. So um, if, if you're familiar with these kind of things, fine. If not, it doesn't matter. So, okay, L is gonna be the proper push forward through the covering space map of the constant sheaf. And if you look at the stock, you can canonically identify it with, with R. So it, it is a rank one local system of three R modules on U. And you have the, the fundamental group of G acting at, as the deck transformation. So it, it permutes the fibers in, in the stock as the transformations with. But the, the Alexander modules, what they are, are the, the homology of these covers. It's just that they are canonically isomorphic to the homology of U with coefficients over this local system. And so, for example, having the local system description is useful to see that these things are finally, where's my cursor? I lost it. Oh, I can see it here. Okay. It's a finally generated R module. Um, because again, U has the homotopy type of mine. I see the OU complex. Um, and okay, this isomorphism is uh, R modules and R acts by deck transformations here. I mean, well, the fundamental group does, but K also acts on, on a K vector space, right? So, um, okay. So, because I titled this talk with the words, uh, the words Hodge theory. Um, I feel I have I have to justify why I'm not gonna work in cohomology because one does Hodge theory in cohomology, right? Um, so the reason for this is again that I left algebraic geometry. So say the dimension of this vector space is infinite, which it can very well happen. Then Okay, at least I, I said that it was a finally generated R module, so it's going to have countable dimensions to give vector space. So it's infinite dimensional, but, but as far as infinite dimensions go, it's, it's the smallest possible. Um, but, okay, cohomology is the dual of homology. And if you take the dual of a direct sum, it becomes a direct product. So if you have infinitely many sum ends, the dimension just goes up. And the cohomology will have uncountable dimension as a k-vector space, and it won't be a finally generated R module anymore. Um, so this is bad. It's just homology is way more manageable. So we're going to stick to to homology because of this. All right. So I wanted to give some examples of Alexander modules and how they've shown up in, in the study of singularities. So let's start with one variable Alexander modules. So G is going to be C star. OK, so if I have a hypersurface, the zero is given by a polynomial. I have an affine hypersurface. And I look at its complement, the defining polynomial, F, uh, you can look at it as an algebraic map from, from the complement to C star, since you're you're taking out the zeros, right? Um, and that's an algebraic morphism. And so, okay, I'll, I said R, what I said is the group ring of the fundamental group, in this case of C star. So now this is canonically isomorphic to the Laurent polynomial rings in one variable, because in C star, you have a canonical generator given by the complex structure. You just do a loop in positive orientation around the origin. And Lipkover was the first person to take this notion of Alexander business from not theory to, to algebraic geometry. And he noticed that these things can carry information about the type and position of singularities of H. So even if you're computing the homology of something which is a smooth and non-algebraic variety, it can give you information of 
about the singularities of, a, of an algebraic variety that's, that's not smooth. Um, so let me illustrate this. Uh, Sarisky sextics. So say you're in C2 and you have a curve and it's a sextic and the only singularities that it has are six cusps. Then if you compute the first Alexander module, then, well, it differs by the position of the cusps. So if they lie on a conic, it's something non-trivial. And if they don't lie on a conic, then, then it is trivial. And so I guess the advantage of Alexander modules here are the, um, at least the first one is very computable. So, and in this case, since we're over a PID, you have the structure theorem for finitely generated modules over a PID, right? So you can easily tell them apart, unlike presentations of the fundamental group, which are not going to be able to compare in general. Um, so, so, yeah, this is an example. I guess for one variable, this would be the analogous notion of the Alexander polynomial for knots. But there's also the notion of Alexander polynomial for links, where you know if you have a link with several components, you sort of want to distinguish them and give a, a different variable to each component. And that's the next example that I want to get sort of the analogous notion in, in the setting of algebraic geometry. So okay, multivariable Alexander modules of hypersurface complements, affine hypersurface complements. So Again, if you start with a hypersurface, which has maybe multiple irreducible components given by a series of different polynomials, then you look at its complement again. And now you can see all of these polynomials defining each of the components, put them all together, and cook up a map to C star to the M. And well, in this case, the covering space that you get is it's it's a topological invariant of you. It doesn't matter of the choice or well of, of course not on the order, but um on these polynomials because it is the universal abelian cover. And okay, in uh the modules that I'm gonna be looking at are modules over this ring, polynomial uh Laurent polynomial ring over M variables. And I wanted to give you one example where multivariable, I mean, there's many, but I have to pick one. Multivariable Alexander modules have been used in the literature. So if you like hyperplane arrangements, um, you know that the homology of a hyperplane arrangement complement in, in, in P2, well, in PN or, or in affine space um, is combinatorially determined. But the topology of the complement is not because the fundamental group is not. And I think this was the first example. Rivnikov gave an example of two combinatorically equivalent line arrangements in P2, whose complements have non-isomorphic fundamental groups. Um, but to prove that the complements were, were non-isomorphic, or that the, the fundamental groups are non-isomorphic, um, well, the proof was finished by, by these people. So Artal, Carmona, Cogoyudo, and Marco. And what they did is that they looked at the at the grading of, of the multivariable Alexander module by the augmentation ideal of, of the ring uh, that we're looking at, of this uh, Laurent polynomial ring. So um, they argue by contradiction. They, they're like, okay, if they were isomorphic, if the fundamental groups were isomorphic, then they have some conditions of how the map would have to look like. And then that imposes some conditions of what the map would have to look like in, in these Alexander module, but quotiented out by, by uh, uh, the, this power of, of the augmentation idea. And they reach a contradiction, but uh, they're able to reach a contradiction because they can compute this. Um, so, I mean, in, in both cases, these things are isomorphic, but it imposes some condition on the maps between the two, and, and that can't happen. So, yeah, Alexander module are useful to study singularities. Any questions up to now? Uh, do you know an example 
like a rhythmical in less number of lines? Yeah, so I think these same people have uh, produced some other line arrangement. So Rimnikov is 13, I believe. Yeah, it, it's complex. Uh, and Nartaka, Monaco, you and Marco have uh, a real, uh, one defined over the real numbers. I mean, they consider the, the complement in as a, the complexified arrangement, but the, but the equations are given over the real numbers and they could also uh, prove that they were different or they have, uh, I don't remember, I can look it up after, because uh, I think they have one with maybe eight or nine. No? <laughs> okay. No, no, I think it's less. I'm pretty sure it's less. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll look it up, but um, I, I, to be honest, I don't remember. Okay, thanks. Um, all right. So I guess I, I gave examples of Alexander modules uh, when, when the semi revealing variety was a tourist um, each time. And so why am I looking at maps to a semi revealing variety in my setting now? And I guess. I don't know if people call them Alexander modules because I don't think they've been studied as much. But um, again, classical Alexander invariants come from maps to a torus. But in general, there's a hot theoretic obstruction to such maps existing. If, if you just start from a smooth algebraic by AU. And so, but what you do have are, are maps to semi abelian varieties. You have the generalized Albanese, which has already been mentioned in this in this conference. Um, but so the generalized Albanese on top of satisfying a, um, a universal property, if you just look at the first homology, what it does is the map between the first homologies of, of the two is almost an isomorphism as much as it can be. The kernel is just a torsion of this thing. Um, so, you know, it, it induces an isomorphism between the free parts of, of these uh, abelian groups. So you can think of, of my setup that has, that our definition of Alexander modules yields, in particular, all the torsion free universal abelian covers of smooth algebraic varieties. But really, I shouldn't, I didn't need to say this, the torsion free, because um, you can first get rid of the torsion by going to finite cover, and those are algebraic. And then you can do the Alexander module business there and go up and get the universal abelian cover in this way. So this reaches these kind of covers. So every reasonable cover that you would think that that's abelian and arises in an al algebraic way, it, it goes through this. Okay. So let me talk about the goal of, of this project. So first of all, we know that the lean poetomic structure on the cohomology of, of algebraic varieties. And also in the homology, you just take the dual mix structure. Uh, it's just that, you know, people work in cohomology, but I need homology, so. Um, but in our setting, let me recall this diagram. U was a smooth connected complex algebraic variety with, a, um, well, G was a semi abelian variety, and there's an algebraic map between the two. And we looked at the exponential map, which is the universal cover. We pull it back, whatever we get here is an infinite sheeted cover with that group, the fundamental group of G. Um, look at the ring, which is the group ring, this fundamental group. And the goal is to develop a Hodge theory for, for these, the Alexander module, so the homology of these covers, that's compatible with the leans. And by compatible, I mean, well, you, you have a map here relating an algebraic variety to, to one that's not. You would like whatever this induces in, in homology to be a morphism of mixed class structures. Um, so we immediately have problems because we've left algebraic geometry. These are infinite dimensional vector spaces in general. So 
what to do. I mean, uh, you can't define a mixed substructure by definition on an infinite dimensional thing. Uh, so let me talk about possible solutions. So I'm just going to copy the problem in the next slide and go from there. Oh, I, I said this. So here are possible solutions. So in previous work with Gaski, Ranogueto, Max and Botum, um, what we did is, well, we only consider the case where G was equal to C star. And then um, we look at the Laurent polynomial ring, um, the Alexander modules were modules over this. So because we're in a PAD, we can, well, the Alexander modules will decompose into a three part and a distortion part. And if what you want to do is look at sub modules of, of the thing, uh, you want to look at the torsion because that's the biggest sub module, which is a finite dimensional vector space. Can you just look at the filtration by five degrees, by multi degree? Yes. <laughs> at this? The quotients? Do you mean? Or what? Or in just by the, the, uh, let me look what I have to say. I'm just saying that you have the powers of P in general in one PM and then it makes the equations. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think this is the one, the the other uh, mm -hmm. approach, the the one we're taking now. So um you look at the augmentation ideal. Um uh, it's not T, but it's T minus one, say. Um and so you can look at quotients by powers of the augmentation ideal. Well, really this, but I'm going to use this notation so the formulas don't get huge. Um, so if you look at some modules, this was the best you could do. I guess if, if you weren't over a PAD, so if G was in C star, you could maybe look at the maximal Artinian submodule, which we explored in a paper too. Um, but this this idea of, of the successive quotients is maybe more natural, or it allows you to reach bigger, bigger things, I guess. Is that what you had in mind? Okay. So now the new goal will be to put a mixed hot structure on these things in a way such that the natural projections are morphisms of mixed hot structure so that it all agrees. And so this will put the structure of, of a pro mix hot structure on the completed module, this lingo that people use. But what it is, is this. Um, okay. So that's what we want to do. But first, uh, I want to talk about the previous work. So now we're going to focus again on one variable, Alexander modules. So D is going to be C star. And we'll see what we did there. So again, this was the setup. Now the exponential map is just the, the actual exponential from, from C to C star. Uh, our setup, U was a smooth connected complex algebraic variety. F was an algebraic map to C star. And phi is the corresponding infinite cyclic cover with that group C that you get from pulling back the exponential. So, oh, and you're over the Laurent polynomial ring in one variable. So our theorem was that the torsion part of the Alexander modules carries a canonical Q in the class structure for all J. And so there's different ways of interpreting this, maybe you can think of this as extending the lean theory of mixed structure to certain non algebraic manifolds, I mean, very particular non algebraic manifolds, but non algebraic nonetheless. Or maybe this setup reminds you of, of nearby cycles, um, just a global setting. Normally, you would have a punctured disk over here and the universal cover of that. So you can think of this as a global version of the limit mixed structure. And in our paper, we actually compare the two. I mean, they are related through a map, which is a morphism of mixed structures, and it is injective um, or surjective, depending on whether you're working from all year, the dual. Um, but 
um, we can only compare them so far in the case where F is proper, but there, there is some relation. Um, so I also wanna say some properties that this mixed house structure has so that I can convince you that, because in principle you can define whatever, right? But I wanna see that it's related to other things in the literature so that we're, we're not worried that it was not the right definition to make. So, okay, let's survey some of the properties. So first of all, it should be functorial. If not, what are we doing? What does functoriality even mean in this sense when you're looking at very specific kind of covers? Well, what you want to have is, okay, if, if you have two smooth connected algebraic values, the data to compute this one variable Alex in the modules, you need maps to C star. So you have those. And U1 and U2 should also be connected through an algebraic map. So if you have something like this that commutes, this G induces a morphism between the, the corresponding covers. And yeah, so G induces a map between the corresponding covers such that if you restrict to the torsion, then you get a mixed structure morphism. So okay, it's it's functorial in this in this setup. Um, also, I said that we wanted to develop a theory that was compatible with the leans. And yes, so the covering space map induces a mixed hot structure morphism between the torsion part of Alexander modules and the, the homology of, of U, which has the leans mixed hot structure. Um, okay. More things that we proved are, you know, this thing where you go to an infinite cyclic cover might be reminiscent of, well, I said nearby cycles, but also the Milner fiber. And so what we proved is that, well, let me, I, I'm just gonna drink some water. <laughs> So let me recall the setup of the of when you have global Miller vibrations. So if you have a weighted homogeneous polynomial and you look at the complement of the hypersurface that it defines, then the map that in, induces from U to C stars a vibration. And you can look at any of the fibers and call it the global Miller fiber. I'm just taking the fiber over one. And in this setting, the, the fiber and this infinite cyclic cover that were constructed are homotopy equivalent through this map. So you have the inclusion of the fiber into the complement and you lift it to the cover and, and, and that's a homotopy equivalence. And in fact, this homotopy equivalence, which in, uh, induces isomorphisms in, in homology um, is a mixed hot structure isomorphism. So, it recovers what, um, you know, in, in this case where, where the two things have the same homology groups, we have an embedded a, a new mix of structure, it's the same thing. And this also was a source of inspiration because, well, the global setting is really easy, but the Miller fiber on the local setting is not um, as much. Well, it's not really easy, but I mean, you don't have to construct another mix of structure. This is just the one by the lean because F is an algebraic variety. But in the local setting, you have to do things to put a mixed hot structure there. People have, and it has been widely studied. So one of the things that's true for the mixed hot structure on the local Miller fiber is that, well, you have the monodromy ratio and you will wonder, well, does the monodromy respect the mixed hot structure? And no. But what is respected is the semi-simple part of the monodromy. And we could prove the analogous statement for this Alexander module. So the semi-simple part of the T action is a mixed hot structure isomorphism. So what I mean is, okay, 
If you remember, our ring now was the Laurent polynomial ring of co uh, of um, in one variable. So our, our variable was T and T acted as a generator of the depth transformation group of these things. So as an invertible linear map on homology, it has a jordan chevalier decomposition to the semi-simple part and its unipotent part. And so with respect to structure is the semi-simple part. And so if you've ever seen the definition of the spectrum of, of a hypersurface singularity, it's encoded there that the semi-simple part of the of the monodromy action in the local Miller fiber is a morphism of mixed touch structures um, because it's what gives you the decomposition into the generalized eigenspaces as sub uh, a sub mixed touch structure. So the same holds in this setting. And yeah, these were the examples that I wanted to give you of things we proved when we were looking at sub modules, so the torsion instead of quotients that made us think that this was the, the right way to, to be looking at these covers. Daniel? So, so the setting, uh, the monitoring the that, is that the same thing that happened here? Good question. No, I don't know. We haven't even thought about it, but that's really interesting. Uh, actually, Okay, that, that might be doable. <laughs> All right. Um, so let me just move on to, to the new setting. So the, the work in progress part. So let me recall again the, the same diagram, but now again, I'm in a semi-abelian variety here. So if you use a smooth connected complex algebraic variety, G is a semi-abelian variety with an algebraic map between the two. And I pull back the universal cover and whatever I get here is what I look at. My ring is now gonna be this Laurent polynomial ring. Now I have hard coefficients. Mm -hmm. And the augmentation ideal of, of this ring, this group ring. Um, then the theorem is what I said the goal was. So we these things carry a canonical or mixed hot structure such that the natural projections uh, with respect to the different powers of the augmentation ideal are morphisms of mixed hot structures. So I'm just gonna copy this theorem into the next slide and talk about it a bit more. So some remarks. If you notice before the theory was over Q and now it's over R, uh, well, our construction, let me explain why this is. So the way I'm, I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of the details because it's, it's a lot. Um, but so what we did was we studied what the lean did and then we constructed a, a thickening of this complex. So what that means is that, well, we we constructed a twisted around complex, but use the filtrations of the lean to define global filtrations and it ended up working. But whatever we do in this setting, which is to put mixed hot structures on quotients, before it was in some modules, right? The torsion, um, we really use the same mixed hot complex in both. I mean, it's not the same, it depends on G and, and here we have more freedom, right? G is any semi-abelian variety, but the, the same idea. Um, it's just that it was easier in the one variable case because you could pick coordinates and now you can't and things get complicated or at least you have to do things in a coordinate free way, but it ends up working out. And so, I guess I didn't say why we couldn't do it for Q yet. So um, in this beginning, you have to sort of pick forms. And in if G is C star to the M, whatever forms I pick, I can sort of have a complex where those forms live and that has an underlying Q structure. If 
where in the case where we have a semi-abelian variety in general or an abelian variety even, I still don't know how to do this, but we hope that this that this is possible. And then Lee Clemens talk on Wednesday, he mentioned the Tom Whitney functors, which could help with this. And so we just need to work harder, but should be doable, I think. Okay. So let's keep going. What does functoriality mean in this setting? Because we would like our theory to be functorial. Um, so let's look at the bottom face of this commutative Q. U1 and U2 are smooth connected algebraic varieties. U1 and U2 are semi abelian varieties. And you have algebraic maps in here, but you want H to be a group homomorphism. I mean, these are groups, <coughs> should be reasonable map between the two. Okay, and now you do, you know, the, the sides are, are just the pullback diagrams to, to cook up the disk covers. And well, now you have two different rings, the one coming from the group ring of this fundamental group and the group ring coming from this fundamental group to act on here, on the two. And so you have two rings, you have two augmentation ideals. So the theorem is that, well, this lift, which exists um, and is unique in the way we have to find things, induces a mixed hot structure morphism in, in these quotients. Uh, for all n. So it's pretty weird in some, I don't know if, if you think about it a little bit because you're switching the ring, but it, it works out. And so maybe this is not the most intuitive result. I, I just wanted to say that, I mean, before we had some sort of functoriality that was only. Do we have a stronger marker? Right. Okay. <laughs> There's many. Let's see. You want one, one, two, one, two, three, F one, C star, F two. So I feel like if we have the identity, if anyone can get the end, then do you want to work the C So, but but it is a more general. I mean, now we can do a more general setting because we're we're considering more than one semi-abelian variety. One. So this is the setting that it makes sense with a new approach. Okay, and so a particular instance of this is the Lean's well, the relationship with the Lean's mixed hot structure. So, okay, I have the same commutative cubus in the previous life, but um, now what's happening is that these two um, algebraic varieties are the same, but the maps are to a semi-abelian variety and to a point which is also a semi-abelian variety, a silly one, but one nonetheless. So, what? yeah, the map that was here before was called G, just the identity. And if you do the pullback of, well, this is the universal cover of a point, a point to a point, do the pullback of that, you just get the identity and you, you're you not really doing anything. Um, but in this side, you were getting a, an honest to God um, cover. And the map between these two covers, the way that this identity lives, can actually be checked to see the same as, as the governing space map. So again, now we're just gonna look at the, the ring coming from here. And I mean, you can also cook up a Laurent, well, a Laurent ring on zero variables. 
in here. Um, well, this is isomorphic to R. And so what the augmentation ideals are going to look like in this setting is, OK, you have an honest to God augmentation ideal, and then you have 0. But if you look at what the previous theorem told you, is that this map should induce a morphism of mixed hot structures on, on the objects that we're considering. And so since this map is the covering space, then this is a mixed morphism of mixed hot structure. And I guess what? The only question would be like, OK, no, but you're doing this weird thing. And this should be a morphism of mixed hot structure. But here, you should put the mixed hot structure that you cook up with your construction, which you haven't explained. Um, but I said that we sort of twist whatever the lean is. So if, if you're over a point, you don't twist anything. And you recover the lean's mixed hot structure. So really, this gives you the relationship between our mixed hot structure and, and the lean's mixed hot structure. Um, OK. So let's talk about how this behaves with respect to deck transformations, because that would also be a, be a question, right? I mean, you, your situation that you started with is, is very geometric. The way it relates to, to, to algebraic geometry, so you're looking at a cover. And so you, you would want to know what deck transformations do to these things. So in this setting, what you have is a little um, weird to break down, but let me try to explain. So, okay. And here we have our mix out structure, and here too. And here we have the lean's mix out structure on the homology of D. Whenever you have a tensor product of two mix out structures, you can define a tensor, uh, well, a mix out structure on the tensor. Um, so, this is endowed with the tensor mix out structure. And OK, so if you have a, a principal tensor of this form, so it will be something here. And this you can take as an element of the fundamental group because, I mean, it's abelian. So you identify it with this through the abelianization map. Uh, sorry, not with this, with C coefficients. But you know this tensor is over R, so you can just take the coefficients out. So if you have something like this, then it gets mapped to a multiplication. So, um, okay, remember the word quotient thing out by powers of the augmentation ideal. So you can think of logarithm of, of some element in the fundamental group. You can formally write it like this and then consider it as a power series in gamma minus one, just a Taylor expansion. But you're going to get powers of gamma minus one. They're bigger and bigger. And those are going to get eaten up by this quotient. So, so really, you're just multiplying by, by something you're, you're allowed to multiply. It, it finishes. So this is what it looks like. Um, I have to say that maybe this is not the most intuitive way of writing it. So let me, I'll take a few. If G is C star to the N, N, sorry. And I get, how do they call it? Gamma in the fundamental group. Then, in this setting, multiplication by the lower is the same structure isomorphism, but here you have to put a basis. And the reason why it looks nicer in the end is because, well, if you look at what well, you identify this with a homology, this is pure of type minus one minus one. I mean, the, the oh, goal homology is pure of type minus one. So this gamma, you can think of it as generating a sub mix of structure, just because everything is <laughs> in one way, then not only in one way, 
there's only one piece. So, so this is what you get. You get pieces, but in general, I can just isolate one one that transformation and have it do something individually that's coherent. So I, I need to state it like this if I if I want to do it in full generality, but maybe that's more intuitive. This that's how I understand it. Okay. Um, so, but in the general setting, you can think of it. Okay, deck transformations don't work well, but the logarithm of deck transformation does, which is not surprising if you've seen variations of mixed constructors before. Um, okay. And so finally, I just have a couple more slides that have to do with, okay, why the augmentation ideal? You picked that one, but why? I mean, maybe there's other ones that you like because, so I guess the motivation for what I'm about to say is that for example, cohomology jump loss, I, you know, they're torsion translated subtori. I don't only want to be looking at the ones going through the identity. I sort of want our thing to be able to see torsion components. So this is the motivation behind what I'm going to say now. So, okay. Let's say that I have a finite cover between my semi abelian variety and my semi abelian variety. And the map I start from U to G, I pull it back through this cover, but now it's a finite cover. So whatever I get here is algebraic. Uh, don't look at this for now. So I could do Alexander modules using this map, or I could do Alexander modules using this map. Well, what if I do them using this? Well, the thing is, if I do the construction where I have the exponential map over these two and I pull it back and everything, the covering spaces that I get are, at, well, if you don't considering the covering space structure, just the, the analytic manifolds, they're, they're the same, they're, they're homeomorphic. Uh, and, but as covers over U N or U, well, you know that they have the same deck group is by one of G, but if you identify them through this isomorphism, Pi one of D doesn't act the same here as than here. There's more deck transformations here. So like you can think of the deck group of the one from above as being a finite index. And by finite index, I mean N uh, subgroup of the deck transformations of here. And so, well, Oh, and now maybe it makes sense, this. <laughs> so UN is isomorphic to, well, this covering space that we have. Uh, but once you identify it with the one I should be putting here, what you're doing to go back to your algebraic variety that you started with, you mod out by the action of deck transformations, but here, you know, you're modding out by less. Okay, so what if I just look at the ideal that looks like, okay, like the augmentation ideal would look like, but the elements of the fundamental group that I consider those minus one are in this finite index group. Well, then, because these two are isomorphic and this isomorphism respects this deck group action, um, I have a canonical isomorphism between the Alexander modules and, and when I mod out, I just need to mod out by the augmentation ideal on one side and this other not augmentation ideal on the other side. And so in here, I have a mixed hot structure and in here, now I have one because these two are isomorphic and I just translate it. Uh, so, okay, my next slide is in the last one, and I just want to write this, but in the one variable setting so that this makes more sense. So, 
what if you do this completion um, in the one variable Alexander modules? Now, again, you're over PAD. You do an unfold cover of C star, so you just take C to, C to the N. And by the previous slide, this is what has a canonical mixed structure, just translating the one that would happen by this Alexander module. And I guess the, the reason I was bringing cohomology jump law say up is, well, our torsion translated. So what is mu n? Eh? What is mu n? This? You so and? Low, lower case n in the highlighted. Uh, His? This. Uh, you can just take whatever power you want. Like before, I have. Oh, okay. yeah, think of this in the, center, the ideal. Okay. It was like a power of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's this result of Bulli and Wang that says that, well, the monodromic theory, but for a uh, theory, theorem, uh, but for Alexander module. So there exists an un, uh, a natural number such that the action of T to the N on the torsion part of Alexander modules is unipotent. So what that tells me is the following. So if I take the, the lowercase n big enough, the torsion part, so whatever we studied in the previous work, is included into this. And so, and actually, this is quite horrible to show, but we have checked that the mixa structure we initially put on this thing agrees with, um, well, the image of this map is a sub mixa structure of this thing. So it, the theories agree. Uh, but I guess as a moral of the story, really in the one variable case, this, this allows you to see a lot. So you're gonna have that this is, a, a direct sum decomposition into a torsion part and a three part. So by doing these quotients, you're eventually gonna see all of the torsion. And by making N bigger and bigger, you're gonna see more and more and more of the three part. Um, and just let me say, maybe right over here, a consequence of functal reality, which is that, you know, initially we have the, the mixed structure in these things. Sorry, I'm just gonna write it for, for one variable so that I don't have to write B in exactly what I mean. Normally you have uh mixed structure in these things and the projections are respect to mixed structure. The minus one to the n minus one. And we keep going, right? But here, what I'm saying, as a consequence of functoriality, you also have that if you mod out by bigger things, then this also will be like this, like this whole thing. So if you're looking to do a, an inverse limit, you can do it this way and you can do it this way. It's, it's, it's very compatible with, well, changing the ring, I guess, or, or changing the ideal. And yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to say. So thank you. <laughs>